trying to um, elsewhere on my channel, I did an experiment where um, I wanted to see interference patterns um, in three dimensions. And um, um, of course, you can mathematically derive that kind of thing. But basically, I wanted to go out and get my own interference patterns. And so I built uh, a little uh, tomography rig to do that using an Arduino and um, at that time, an old CD uh, sled assembly or transport mechanism. And, um, what you worked, it didn't work bad, uh, but there were only like, uh, 20 steps per millimeter and the rest was micro steps. So it wasn't that accurate. So I wanted to do the more or less the experiment again. And so I want, what I have here, this is a, this is part of a wafer inspection microscope that was used, um, uh, to inspect, um, basically silicon wafers and for, for the, during the fabrication process. This unit, I think, was made in around 1989 or 1990. It's very old, and um, oddly enough, this thing was probably very expensive when it was new. Um, I'm going to do a video on this elsewhere on my channel, but this enti almost this entire thing, except for these little covers and the, the, the bits that I put on, is all tool steel, and it's all wire. Appears to be wa all wire EDM'd out and ground, and um, so. So this is a, a kind of a, a neat thing. It's a, just about an instrument. This is the moving part of the axis. On top of the axis, I've got the same exact um, 3D printed little sled assembly that holds a little laser module. And I guess I can turn that on. And you can see there's a little laser module here that shines a laser light, a monochromatic light through this little two pinhole sheet right here. And um, and another video I made that on this one, I just positioned it where I wanted and I taped it. And the reason why I did that is it allowed me to get close to the uh, the, the, the webcam sensor, which is not pictured because I I went as far as I could. I wanted to de bear the um, uh, the uh, sensor and um, I didn't have a tool hard enough to scrape it off. And so I applied too much pressure and I wiped out the camera anyway. But I want to show you the general setup. So anyhow, I've got this uh, little sled assembly. It's fastened with uh, three millimeter screws onto uh, 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 an aluminum block, which is just glue gun glued on. So even though this thing is just all hacked together, I try to make it accurate. So um, this plate here, which this mounts on, is referenced from the here. I think I used a parallel to do this. I had height problems, and I put a steel parallel in between here like a machinist would use. And so this is pretty parallel to this. And, um, and I use steel squares such as this to set this straight and so forth. And um, by the time I got done, I was actually using a dial indicator and um, a dial test indicator to, to make this square here, and both vertically and horizontally. And um, these parts I just cobbled together from the other experiment. Um, the sled was directly from the other kind of experiment. And I know that you can, you know, you can mathematically derive this, but I think this is neat. I think I'm interested in this. I want to keep on going smaller with this and um, as far, and, and then mess around with polarization. So anyway, this is the same sled I used in the other experiment and I've got a little laser module. And we'll turn that on just to show you that it works. And this provides monochromatic light. And um, it strikes a um, and it strikes and goes through this uh, two pinhole sheet right here, which I made another video. And oddly enough, instead of using a clip, I just taped this one on, which worked pretty good. And the thing is, it lets me get all the way to the front with the surface here, not interfering. I put a little bit of flat black paint on here, and. Um, because Vanna Black isn't commercially available, I've noticed that there is another um, paint or coating that's supposed to be pretty black. It's probably better blacker than what I used on this. The rest of this is not painted. Um, anyhow, this little slide assembly is is fixed to this little um, um, scrap of aluminum here with three millimeter tap screws, and uh, this entire assembly slides. And uh, once again, the, these two parts are from the other um, experiment, and I just screwed them onto here. And what this is, is um, is a little translation platform for an, for an old microscope. And you can see by using these two knobs that I could translate this either way. 
And this works pretty good, oddly enough. Uh, I, this was a lot easier than what I was using before. As you can see, there's a little bellows in here. And um, unfortunately, the top of this needs to be painted. And um, I was trying to find some eggshell paint. I've got this pension for eggshell uh, colored paint. And uh, I saw it in another part of a... a, a, a uh, piece of scientific uh, equipment and uh, and uh, I like it and so I'm trying to hold out and find some paint and so I'm trying to put up with this silver here and um, you can see the glue gun glue but this I didn't want to fall off and oddly enough if you if you're just gonna be making random stuff like this and do it optically and this doesn't have to be that strong what it needs to do is not move and you have to set it up accurately and uh I find that just putting a couple of drops, letting it, um, um, letting it harden, and then putting more seems to work pretty good. And uh, there might even be some vibration isolation between the many, basically layers or stages between these. And uh, so this worked out pretty good. And um, before I had a webcam mounted here, and I've experimented this, and I tried to de-bear, de actually remove the color ray, and I wiped out the camera. But I want to show you this much anyhow. This is tool steel. This is um, aluminum, probably like 6061 or something like that. On this end of the axis, I've got a DB9, and um, I've got a little little cable with just another piece of cable for a strain relief. And this looks pretty junky, but oddly enough, it works so far. Um, I've got a 3D printed adapter that adapts this motor right here. Inside of here, where you can't see yet, is a coupler, and I'll be tearing this down in another video if you haven't seen it already. This is a very old Vexta motor, and these were uh, actually kind of popular in Silicon Valley at one time for um, for um, like scientific and, and, and um, uh, wafer fabrication equipment. And uh, they're not so popular anymore. But um, anyway, this particular motor is five phase, which allows better uh, micro stepping and better torque during micro stepping. Um, and this motor, particular motor is 0.36 degrees per step. So there's a thousand steps per revolution on this motor. And um, so which makes it a good match for something like this. Um, this axis has got a one millimeter pitch screw in it. And so each step on this motor is one thousandth of a millimeter or one micron, as they say. The motor's hooked up to this proprietary controller. There's a little switch on these for full step or micro stepping. Um, these, these will only do um, 2x micro stepping. Just for convenience, I have fixed a little breadboard on here and I put a little Arduino um, Nano compatible on here. And basically that's wired into the controller here on this end. I do I, like their idea of putting a power supply in with the driver and I'm surprised that very few companies package those because this is terribly convenient um, because uh, you know the, it's, all, it's all set to go. You just hook this up to uh, like an Arduino and hook it up to the motor and it's good to go and uh, there's not all power supply wires between the two and um, in machines they used to have a series of these and that would just have AC little AC power cords just to power them like that and although this axis is fairly accurate there's still uh, an optics a lot of linear stages such as this one this one unfortunately is dirty I didn't have time to refurbish it yet but uh, you get the idea that there are like a lot of optical things like this are another class of more accurate in some of those still more and then when you go beyond that you're talking about using like micro positioning using piezoelectrics and stuff notwithstanding um they did want this to be accurate and accurate over a long distance i mean comparatively um compared to you know regular optical stuff um this this motor i put on and uh, but the originally it had a 200 step um superior electric um uh, motor it was really old and but then they had the motor hooked up to a planetary uh, anti-backlash gear system so now they're talking about um, dividing um, one millimeter up to 800 parts and then the um running the motor there was um, a micro stepping controller a very sophisticated one at that and um so i believe the the controller did 4x or 8x uh, micro stepping so they wanted this thing to be able to position within one 
three thousand two hundredths of a millimeter or twice that. And um, but when I rebuilt it, you know, it's old and stuff. I for, just for simplicity's sake, I put this um, one thousand step per revolution motor on here with the option of doing micro stepping. Looking close, you can see how visually ugly it is. It's just glue gun glued together. But oddly enough, this worked for my purpose for now, and so it's totally reversible. I, I actually want to keep this thing for other things. And um, but uh, to show you how it works, I'll give it um, a, a, a tilt to move a millimeter. And so that's it moving a, a millimeter. So it's not terribly exciting. And here's a, a centimeter. It also homes. And oddly enough, um, I'll give it a nudge. It won't, you won't, you, you just, just, you're not going to be able to see this move, but I'll give it a nudge, um, which is one micron. Anyway, that's a micron, <laughs> but it, it, it likely did step. As far as results, I was very happy with this, with this assembly physically. Oddly, it looks terrible. I mean, I even have a little spring in here to help it keep from sagging. It looks terrible, but you know what? It ran well. It really ran well for what it is. And, um, I want to go, uh, I want to go farther down and I want to not only see what's going on with, with, uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested in those, uh, like single photon experiments and stuff like that. And so I'm looking at avalanche diodes and stuff. I don't know what I can do at this point because I don't have, you know, I don't have, uh, that many supporters and, um, I, but I, I'm, I'm just fascinated by light and I've always been, um. When I was a kid, I was really into lasers, and um, at a point where you know you could you couldn't you couldn't even buy one. I mean, unless you had a lot of money. I think the very first laser I saw was over twelve hundred dollars, and it was for lining up pipes, drainage pipes, and and that kind of thing, and it was huge. It was the size of a sewing machine. But um, anyway. Um, so that's going to be it for this video. And another video, I'm going to do kind of a teardown of one of these axes. And I want to show what the lengths they had gone through to try to make them as accurately as they did. And um, there's actually a construction technique that they use in these axes that might be kind of cool to implement in like a standard CNC machine if you're looking for accuracy. So look elsewhere on my channel for that.